Statement defined, correct? If I remember right. Final exhortation, yep. Revelation chapter 18, verses 4 and 5. I'll tell you, I missed the podium because the po I missed my shelf. I missed my shelf. You don't realize what you take for granted until you don't have it, they say, huh? All right. Revelation chapter 18. <clears throat> Let's read verses 4 and 5. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, <clears throat> and God hath remembered her iniquity. Remember, remember, we're talking about that final exhortation was to come out, and we see again that God's warning his people, um, warning people before he executes judgment. And it seems to be a, a constant thread and a constant theme uh, throughout the Bible. And you notice it's another voice from heaven. Um, so, different one, not the same one. We say, why is the warning come out? Because soon there's going to be no escape. Okay? <clears throat> There'll be no escape. Then we look at verse 6, judgment defined. That's what we're looking at. Judgment defined in verse 6. It says, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. The judgment defined. If you notice there, another angel calls for God to take vengeance on the sins of Babylon, similar to the prayer of the um, tribulation saints in Revelation 6, 9-10. Enough warnings have... Do we, do we agree with the statement? We're in Revelation chapter 18, and enough warnings have been given all the way up till now. Correct? God's warned people several times throughout this book. <clears throat> now, so he, there, it's asking to reward her sinfulness. Um, sowing and reaping. What's, what's it asked for? Double her punishment. So whatever... This, you know, the horror Babylon did double her punishment. Babylon's sins are overflowing and, and piling up. And in the Mosaic law, wrongdoers were required to pay double restitution for their crimes. Okay? Now, think about that. So, uh, double there, double her wrath from God. We also see, and we see in verse 7, um, her torment and sorrow because it says, how much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. Right? So, um, you know, she glorified herself, was proud. She lived uh, a very, you know, uh, life that was satisfying to herself. And, and so, therefore, she overestimated her own powers. And now we see this going on, and judgment will come quickly. Right? Then in Revelation chapter 18, verses 9 to 19, we won't read all those verses for sake of time, we see judgment lamented. Judgment lamented. During the tribulation, sinners will refuse to mourn over their sin. To me, that's still a, a, a thought that's, that's... I don't know about you, but have you ever viewed your own sinfulness... It doesn't make you happy, does it? Huh? What you, it should cause sorrow to yourself, right? You should mourn over those things. Um, but they don't. And even though God's judgment will cause untold death and devastation, they refuse to repent over their sins. Yet, they mourn over the fall of Babylon. Isn't it interesting how misplaced people's priorities are? But isn't that true today? You know, people will mourn over silly things. Um, you know, um, you ever look back and you have memories and, um, <clears throat> you know, for, for all the lockdown period, um, people would whinge and all that type of stuff about being locked down and having to have online services and all those types of things because church is important. Then we get back into being able to have church services and state of origin comes along and church is no longer important. 
we'll miss church to watch the game. But yet, for two years, we were, oh, we got to be in church. We got to be in church. It's important. Now that you can be in church, ah, we don't need to anymore. You know, it's kind of one of those funny things. And so before, um, you say, why do you use that illustration? I'm not trying to, I'm not, I don't know anyone that here that missed church because it's data board, and so I'm not, I'm not saying that. But I'm just showing that even as Christians, we have silliness like that. All right? We, we, we do stuff like that. And so we've got to be careful. And so uh, as we look at this, um, and there's three groups in this passage of Scripture. Look at verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Right? So the kings are going to lament being judged. There's, there's judgment going on. Right? And then in verse 11... You see, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. All right, so are these merchants weeping over her, or are they weeping more because no one buys their stuff anymore? <laughs> it's like, yes to both, okay? Yeah, they're, they're, they're giving the appearance that they're weeping over her, but you notice the little clause there in Scripture, no one buys their, you know, basically no one's buying their merchandise anymore. And uh, so they'll weep over, over her, and... The economic prosperity um, that was there, it just goes, okay? Um, and so we see that, that judgment take place. And then there's the third uh, group of people. Look at verse 17. To verse 19. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their head and cried, weeping and wailing arise, uh, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein we made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her coast costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. Again, uh, the, the shipmasters and the sailors and all that, they're weeping over this destruction of, you know, Babylon. Is, but did you catch in there why? Because of her costliness, we made a lot of money getting her stuff. And now she's in one hour, it's gone. Again, just shows, we're going to look at it a little bit more um, this morning in the morning service, just shows how quickly life can change. How quickly things can happen like that. Uh, rich people who invest their stuff in silliness and their own things can go like that uh, and be gone. And so the shipmasters, the judgment is being lamented. And then uh, look at verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Now this is going to sound like a, a, a statement that's a bit interesting, but the next thing we see is judgment enjoyed. Do you notice the perspective of earth and the perspective of heaven are very different? Anyone notice that? Earth is like, oh, she's destroyed. Heaven's like, heaven's being told, hey, rejoice. I'm avenging everything she did to you. I'm making things right. You know, the, the God, how can those who sin and get by? He's going, I told you they wouldn't. Told you they wouldn't. And I don't think the rejoicing is over the destruction. I think the rejoicing is over the avenging. Does that make sense? Um, and so we, we see this in stark contrast, the world's perspective versus redeemed heaven's perspective. All right? And then we see judgment completed, verses 21 to verse 23. And a mighty angel took a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus will violence, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whosoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all. 
in thee. And the light of, the, of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of earth, for by their, thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And so as we, as we look at this, Babylon's destruction will be so complete that she will disappear from the face of the earth forever. Never again to be spoken of. Now, that, that's important because this, this concept of Babylon, if you remember, we, we said, you know, going all the way back to the Tower of Babel and, you know, all those type of things and all these different world religions and all these type of things. So finally, in the end, there will be no more Babylon. Um, we'll see the great millstone and, you know, you see the, the violent end. And, and lastly, in verses 23 and verse 24, we see judgment justified. We read verse 23 and verse 24, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. And so we, we, we see um, three reasons given for the justification of Babylon's judgment, you know, the wealthy merchants, the, the sorcerers, and the persecutions. All those things were directly against the word of God, not the wealthy merchants, but how they got wealthy. Um, you know, and, 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 and so there, those are the reasons given for the judgment. Now, concluding thoughts. Babylon, from its very beginning, has been the center of man's rebellion against God. Babel, Babylon. From the very beginning of its existence, has been the center of man's rebellion against God. What took place at the Tower of Babel? Rebellion against God, correct? We can reach God, we can, you know, do those other things. So you think about it all throughout time, um, all false religions and humanistic philosophies of the world have their roots in this satanic driven city. Babylon will once again raise her ugly head during the tribulation period. All right, we see that. Number two, we see her meteoric rise to fame will be short-lived and will come to a cataclysmic end, never to surface again. We've seen that in, in the verses we looked at. And the third thing, now that Babylon is annihilated, both in her religious and her political forms, so the world religion form and the political forms, uh, this, this sets the stage for the triumphant return of Jesus Christ and his 1,000 year reign on earth. All right. So now that the false religion and now that that city is completely gone and done away with, now we've set the stage for Jesus Christ to physically return and come back and set up a 1,000 year rule and reign on Christ. Say why? The ruling thing has been destroyed. The religions have been destroyed. All that's gone and now Christ comes into that and we, we'll get into uh, towards the return of Christ, some interesting things. Uh, the millennial kingdom, um, there's some interesting things there. Um, as we finish up, my goal is, Lord willing, to try to finish our study of the book of Revelation by the end of this year. And next year, as we jump into this new theme with one purpose and, and these different things that we're going to be looking at, um, I thought it would be interesting. Uh, we're going to spend, I think so far... I've got about 15, 16, maybe 17 lessons. We all know a lesson doesn't just take one week, right? Because we, we split it up and have shorter times on prayer and praying. And uh, we all know we're supposed to pray, but let's look at what the Bible says. So we're going to spend a good part of next year just studying prayer. Um, hopefully that will help us a lot. Um, I know in the studies that I've been doing on it, it's opened my eyes to a lot of things that you just kind of take for granted. Um, but so that's, that's kind of where we're going in our studies, and we'll look forward to that. All right, now, um, if you have your prayer bulletins, if you take those out,